Hello and welcome to another Windows Server 2012 screencast. My name is Jeff Alexander. I'm a technical evangelist for Microsoft Australia. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, new technology in Windows Server 2012, uh, focusing on networking. Uh, and this technology is NIC teaming, uh, or network interface uh, card teaming. Uh, now just to give you a bit of background before we go and uh, show you how this is actually configured. Uh, NIC teaming uh, prior to Windows Server 2012 was um, a technology that was supported by your hardware vendor and it was not built into the operating system. Uh, now with Windows Server 2012, we're really pleased to um, not now uh, give you the ability to build fault tolerance for your network adapters uh, without actually buying any additional hardware or software. Uh, so NIC teaming allows you, essentially in a nutshell, is allows you to take multiple network interfaces and configure them to work as a team, uh, which allows you to prevent connectivity loss uh, if one of those network adapters happens to fail. Uh, it allows a um, server uh, to tolerate a network adapter and port failure uh, up to the first switch segment. Um, and it also allows you to aggregate bandwidth for multiple network adapters. For example, if you had two one gigabit uh, network adapters, you, that would give you two gigabits of full through throughput. Uh, the advantage that we now have with Windows Server 2012 is the effect that now the NIC teaming, but by having NIC teaming built into the operating system, it works with all network adapter vendors and it eliminates any potential issues with proprietary solutions. Uh, if you look at the technical description for uh, NIC, NIC teaming, essentially it's uh, broken down into a number of different scenarios. First of all, you have some configurations. Uh, there's NIC teaming configurations, which gives you one or more physical network adapters configured, uh, connected to a NIC teaming um, multiplexing unit to present one or more virtual adapters to the operating system. Then what we actually do is use some algorithms uh, for traffic distribution, and there's several different al algorithms that we actually use. First of all, we use um, uh, either switch independent modes, and uh, that's the one I'm going to be showing you um, in a couple of seconds. Uh, in switch independent mode, essentially is an algorithm for uh, each, makes it possible for those team members to connect to different switches. Uh, because at this point in time, the switch um, doesn't know that the interface is part of a team at the host, and it doesn't require the switch to be participating in the teaming itself. Uh, switch dependent mode um, is uh, a mode that uh, uses algorithms where the switch participates in the uh, team itself. And there's two common choices when you, when you use switch dependent mode. Uh, there is uh, uh, generic or static teaming, and a lot of uh, vendors have used this in the past. Uh, this uses the IEEE 802.3 AD draft version 1. This requires, uh, this, this is going to require a little bit more configuration at uh, your end. You're going to have to do configuration on both the switch um, and the host to identify which links in the switch actually form the team. It's a statically configured solution uh, that's a little bit more difficult to set up and it works with most server class switches. Uh, then we have another mode which is called dynamic teaming or link aggregation control protocol or LACP. It's so also referred to as the um, IEEE 802.3 um, AD uh, because it was developed by that particular community. Um, so those are the two types of mode. With either of these modes, uh, what it results in is inbound and uh, outbound traffic uh, that approach practical limits of aggregated um, bandwidth because what happens is the team's pool ends up linking uh, is seen as a single pipe. So. There's a couple of things that you have to be aware of from a requirement perspective with NIC teaming, and I'll, I'll um, show you how to set up NIC teaming in a second, but there's a couple of requirements that you have to think about. Uh, first of all, NIC teaming requires Windows Server 2012. It requires at least uh, two or more uh, network adapters. Um, they should be the same speed. However, you can set them up with um, uh, network adapters of a different speed, but it will actually throttle back to the one of the slower speed. Um, two or more network adapters, um, if you are seeking bandwidth aggregation or failover protection, one or more uh, network adapters if you're um, only seeking VLAN segregation for the network SAC. Uh, there's a couple of things that uh, don't, the incompatibilities. It's compatible with all networking components except for SROV, um, our remote direct um, memory access and TCP chimney offload. Uh, for SROV and RDMA, data is delivered directly to the network adapter without passing through the networking stack. Uh, so the network team can't see a redirected data as part of this. And in this particular release, um, TCP chimney offload isn't uh, supported. So with that, uh, let's go and have a look at where we, a couple of the places where we can actually go and configure teaming. 
So here what you can actually see is that I am on, uh, I'm remote uh, desktoped into one of my servers that has two Intel uh, network adapters. And the two network adapters that I'm going to be creating the team on are uh, Intel Pro uh, 1000 dual port uh, network adapters. These, uh, this is a, a fairly straightforward server network adapter that you can, you can buy. And I'm going to create a team out of these particular network adapters. So the first place we need to go to is we need to go into the local server and we go to the properties of the local server and you'll see here uh, that NIC teaming is disabled at this point in time. So I'm just going to click this because as we, as we know in Server Manager um, you, can, uh, uh, you can actually uh, take tasks uh, in uh, Server Manager itself and, and, and do things. And you'll see here that we now have loaded a wizard style that gives us the server that we're currently on the teams that we currently have and the adapters and interfaces that are currently available to be used with the particular team. And this gives us some statistics around adapter speed, state. Um, and so you can see I've got three uh, adapters that are available. And it's simply a case of going and creating a new team. And I'm going to call this the Intel uh, team because I'm using an Intel adapter. And I'm going to go and choose Ethernet 2 and Ethernet 3 because these are my uh, two Intel and you can see we've got some modes that we can choose here on this particular screen and as I talked about uh, before we have the ability to do uh, switch independent mode which means the switch is not involved in the teaming itself or we can do static teaming or LACP teaming if we wanted to do switch dependent mode those are the two different modes for switch dependent. We also have the ability to do um, address hash, uh, which is going to be used for uh, this particular host. Okay, so what that means is that uh, we're, we're load balancing across those two uh, teams through those algorithms. We can also uh, use the Hyper-V uh, port for this, and we can specify in the Hyper-V manager to use um, a particular um, network card as a, a team within the virtual switch. So we have that option. We can also specify if we want to have a standby adapter from the primary uh, on the primary team interface. In this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to say all of the adapters are active and we're just going to hit OK. And what this is going to do is it's going to form the team and it's going to create that team for me. Now, I may lose connectivity for a couple of seconds here while um, that connects. Oh, well, what's actually pretty good, I didn't lose connectivity. And what you're going to see here is that um, we have created a team now and the team is actually created and it's going to tell me uh, the speed and the, uh, all the data down in this screen uh, here and it's going to tell me the status of my of my team and there's one other thing that I wanted to show you is what will happen is that now what happens is that we have a new adapter that gets created a new virtual switch new switch called the network adapter for the multiplexer driver and if we go and look at the properties of our team here what you can actually see is that we have no TCP bound. We're only bound to the network adapter multiplexer protocol because that is bound to each of my, uh, my uh, network adapters and then all of our um, other TCP st stuff is bound through the multiplexer driver. All of our TCP settings, all that kind of stuff and the multiplexer driver is not bound to that. So pretty much that is all there is to setting up a network team. So I hope you found this uh, screencast uh, beneficial and we'll see you soon on another screencast very soon. Thank you.